The light of Christ is still shining, shining in the midst of our darkness, shining even now in this place. Even when we're kind of tired. I don't know about you guys, but this has been an exhausting season. It's been cold. We still don't have the heat on. Sorry for the um, extra warmth today. But it's chilly in here. And it's chilly sometimes in here. As we have seen this season, even now, even when we're not running from house to house and trying to do a million things that maybe we did in the past, we've replaced it with other things that have, have made us super busy and given us a need to pause. One of the greatest gifts that we've been given this holiday season, among the amazing gifts from all of our friends here at um, the church and in the community, one of the most amazing gifts that we receive was the gift of a service given to us by the Iowa Annual Conference for just such a time as this. We received this service back in November, um, but we already had our plans made through um, Christmas season, and we wanted to make sure that we used it when we needed it the most. And as we were doing our planning, it turns out following Christmas and Epiphany, following all the extra work of recording and putting together um, videos for Christmas Eve as an extra service in the week for the carols and the lessons for the watch night service for Epiphany, it became clear that we were tired, that we needed a little bit of a break from editing videos. So this week, we're pleased to give you this gift from the Iowa Annual Conference to um, support all of our clergy in their most difficult times in the conference this, this season. And we've, we've put it off for a while, but we thought this, there's no better time than this. So today we present to you a service that we didn't have to edit. But thanks be to God for those who did and for those who, who get the benefit of hearing from some of our best in the conference. Today, enjoy the service and know that your staff here, the ones who have been doing extra cleaning, extra work with the children's program, extra work with um, worship services, extra work with answering phones and coordinating activities, that now is the time for us to have a little Sabbath as well. And so today, we enjoy watching the service with you and sharing together with you the light that will never be extinguished. Blessings to you all. Let us pray. Gracious God, breathe your breath of life into us again. Renew us with your spirit. Fill us with your holy word as we celebrate with, with those that we don't always get to celebrate with this week. And as we share in this service that, that the other churches in, in this annual conference already have, have been sharing in, we thank you that we are a part of something so much bigger than just us. Today, Lord, may your mercy, your peace, your joy, and your light shine on us in a new way. And may we be rested and renewed enough to see it. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Blessings to you this day. Enjoy the worship. Good morning. My name is Ron Carlson. I am District Superintendent of the Northwest Region.
please join me in our call to worship this morning. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Today we choose to rejoice. Today we choose to worship and give thanks. Seek the peace of God that will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Today we choose God's peace. Today we place our trust in God. Turn your hearts away from the distractions and disappointments of life that will always flow in and flow out like the tide. Set your affections on things above and worship the Lord who loves you and cares for you. We come to worship God who alone is excellent and worthy of praise. Amen. Hello, I'm Jay Johnson, the Director of Congregational Excellence for the conference. Uh, won't you please join me in prayer? Gracious God, when the world's political noise is turned up high, we come not to escape, but to seek wisdom and to focus on things that are worthy. Dial down the distractions in our minds, tune our senses to your word and our hearts to your praise. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Hi, I'm Ryan Christensen. I'm the Associate Director for Congregational Excellence. I'm not on the cabinet, but I get to share a children's message uh, with you today. And, and with me is my wonderful daughter. What's your name? Olivia. And how old are you, Olivia? Six. She is six. And, and so Pastor Doug Q's message that he'll share in a moment uh, will include a reference to Philippians 4.4. 4. Olivia wrote this out, and here it is. Here's her writing and some of mine. And Olivia, can you read Philippians 4.4? 4. Philippians 4.4. 4. Rejoice in the Lord's always. Again, we will say rejoice. Awesome. Philippians 4.4. 4. It's all about rejoicing. And, and so the last few months have been kind of hard, haven't they, Olivia? Yeah. What do you think of the virus? Uh, some things are good about the virus and some are not. If you had to give the virus a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Um, thumbs to the side. Thumbs to the side, okay. Well, in, in the virus uh, time over the last several months, we've tried to rejoice even when it's been hard around us. We've tried to cultivate joy in our family. So we thought we would share a few of the ways that we're doing that and try to invite you um, to join with us in cultivating joy. So during the summer, we, especially during the summer, we did some dad adventures about an hour a day where I'd take the kids out and we'd have some fun. And what were some of the things that we did, Olivia? Playing baseball and um, playing baseball and having fancy meals. And having fancy meals. Where do we, we'd go play some stuff at the park, what yeah, we play baseball. at the park. Baseball and soccer. Would you like to be the kicker or the goalie? Golly. She'd like to Golly. be the goalie. And what would we race down our stairs? A race car. Zoo, 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 zoo. Olivia, are you ready? Yeah. Ready, set, go. And you remember one time we had the egg? Yeah, the like chocolate egg, and we at the end we ate it. Yeah, and for it Easter we raced Easter candies down the stairs. So right now we've been cultivating joy by writing things down each meal, I guess each day, and putting uh, that note in a jar. And Olivia, when will we open that jar? Uh, on Thanksgiving. So we'll open it for Thanksgiving, but uh, um, but if you do a joy jar, I think that would be easy thing. Just put one joy every day down in the jar and decide when you'll open it. And we do that every day to cultivate joy. Yeah. Olivia, again, could you read that Bible verse with me? Philippians 4.4. 4. Rejoice, Rejoice in the, the Lord, Lord always. Again, again I, I will say rejoice. Friends, I invite you to join with us in cultivating joy in your home. My name is Hee Chan Jan. I'm the Central District Superintendent. Um, please join me in the response to the word uh, in the reaffirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, I'm Doug Q, Superintendent for the Southeast Region, and I'm honored to bring you the word for this celebration. This is from the book of Psalms, Psalm 46, and some selected verses, where it reads, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult, the nations are in an uproar, the kingdoms totter. God's voice resounds, the earth melts. Lord of hosts is with us. God of Jacob is our refuge. Come behold the words of the Lord. He makes war cease to the end of the earth, breaks the bow, shatters the spear, burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. God of Jacob is our refuge. And from the letter to the church at Philippi, Philippians 4, verses 4 through 7. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, 
Let your requests be known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Friends, this is the word of God for we, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Folks, both of these passages will find expression in what we share here, but there's also a third passage that I'd like to lift up as we begin. And it may be somewhat obscure for some of us, may have been some time since your last hearing of it, quite possible that you're not at all familiar with it. Familiarize yourself with it now. And I want to start with chapter 1, verse 1 of the book of Chicken Little. Chicken Little liked to walk in the woods. One day as she walked, Acorn fell from a tree, hit her in the head, and Chicken Little exclaimed, because that's what chickens do, they, but thank goodness the text translates it for us. Chicken Little exclaimed, the sky is falling, I must run and tell the king. Well, as she runs, she meets Henny Penny. Where are you going? Says Henny Penny. Oh, Henny Penny, the sky is falling, I'm going to tell the king. How do you know the sky is falling? And Chicken Little says, well, I saw with my own little eyes, heard it with my own little ears, and a piece of it fell on my poor little head. Well, Henny Penny says, we must run and tell the king at once. As you know, as they're running, they meet Goosey Lucy, who asks them, where are y'all going? Sky's falling, we're running to tell the king, says Henny Penny. Well, how do you know the sky's falling, asked Goosey Lucy. Chicken Little told me, said Henny Penny. Chicken Little said, true. I saw it with my own little eyes, heard it with my own little ear. Piece of it fell on my poor little head. Well, Goosey Lucy says, we must run and tell the king at once. Well, as they're running, they meet Turkey Lurkey, who asks them, where are y'all going? Sky's falling. We're running to tell the king, says Goosey Lucy. Well, how do you know sky's falling, asked Turkey Lurkey. Henny Penny told me, said Goosey Lucy. Chicken Little told me, said Henny Penny. Chicken Little said, true. I saw with my own little eyes, heard it with my own little ears. Piece of it fell on my poor little head. Well, we must run and tell the king at once, says Turkey Lurkey. As they're running, wouldn't you know it, they meet Ducky Lucky. Ask them, where are y'all going? Sky's falling, we're going to tell the king, says Turkey Lurkey. Well, how do you know the sky's falling, asked Ducky Lucky. Goosey Lucy told me, said Turkey Lurkey. Henny Penny told me, said Goosey Lucy. Chicken Little told me, said Henny Penny. And Chicken Little said, true. Saw with my own little eyes, heard it with my own little ears. Piece of it fell on my poor little head. Well, we must run and tell the king at once, said Ducky Lucky. As they're running, they meet Foxy Loxy. Ask them as well, where are y'all going? Sky's falling. We're going to go tell the king, says Ducky Lucky. And this is where the litany changes, folks. Notice Foxy Loxy's response here. Well, do you know where the king is, Foxy Loxy asked. Well, I do not, said Ducky Lucky. I do not, said Turkey Lurkey. I do not, said Goosey Lucy. I do not, said Henny Penny. Chicken Little said, all I know is, I saw with my own little eyes, I heard it with my own little ears, a piece of it fell on my poor little head, and I do not know where the king is. Well, I do, Foxy Loxy says. Come with me and I'll show you the way. And they run on and on until they come to Foxy Loxy's den. Run right in, Foxy Loxy says. And they all ran in, but they never, ever, never came out again. Folks, there are three morals to this story. First is, be brave and do not panic when the acorns of life hit you on your poor little head. Second is, always be careful that we don't get caught up and other people's hysteria when the acorns hit them in the head. And the third is that whenever we do tend to get collectively hysterical, there is always going to be a foxy loxy around to take advantage of us. In the, in the fourth chapter of Philippians, Paul writes these words, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Don't you think that's some information that Chicken Little could have used? Now, I don't know what got stirred up when that acorn hit Chicken Little in the head. Maybe Chicken Little had a boring little life, and he wanted to spice it up a little bit. Maybe Chicken Little had little control over anything and worried about every little thing. Then again, maybe Chicken Little was a little less of a chicken than she thought and a little more human than she appears. Folk, my hunch is there's some Chicken Little in all of us. Y'all remember that passage to the church at Philippi? Be anxious for nothing. Anxious. 
You don't get anything that's kind of escalating your anxiety right now? Largest wildfires that the state of California has ever seen going on right now. Historic wildfires raging in Colorado right now. Hurricanes hammering the Gulf Coast. The number of them being so high this year that the World Meteorological Organization has had to resort to the Greek alphabet to name them. And the last two that hit the Gulf Coast made landfall within 13 miles of one another. Y'all got anything that's kind of escalating your anxiety right now? Oh, that's right, a global pandemic. Anxiousness. Folks, it's a brutal season. Our anxieties have escalated. It is almost as if they are anticipated. Each of us, all of us, in the midst of it, doing the best we can. And it's not that we are unfamiliar with anxiety. We have mechanisms to deal with it, tools to address it. We've weathered anxiety, but it's the rapid escalation coupled with the inability to see the far horizon that drives our reaction. And I hope you all heard that. It's the rapid escalation of our anxiety that drives not our response, but our reaction to it. And that's when it becomes toxic, when we move from response to reaction. And, and all of a sudden, that anxiety, much like a virus, y'all, y'all heard that word lately? Uh, much like a ri- virus, that anxiety becomes infectious. Y'all remember Chicken Little, and y'all remember Chicken Little's friends unchecked, escalating anxiety, and it became infectious. And they all caught it, and it became a pandemic, and their hysteria leads to their own undoing. Friends, there's more than just a little bit of chicken little in all of us. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, it's going to heart, guard your hearts and your minds through, through Christ Jesus. So how is that working for you? Is the peace of God guarding your heart and your mind? Over the long haul of the better part of a year, what does this even look like for us? Maybe, just maybe it looks something like, like this. And we turn to Psalm 46. That God is our refuge and strength, very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change. Hey, there's a, there's a word for you, change. Where I'm from, that's a word that'll get the choirs clucking in the <laughs> southeast district. I'll tell you why. Though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult, nations in an uproar, kingdoms totter, all this anxiousness. And yet he utters his voice. And the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. God of Jacob is our refuge. Come behold the works of the Lord. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the, the bow. He shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. One, one of the tragic twists of the chicken little story is that it it, it took so long for Chicken Little and his friends to travel to the king. They had confidence in the king's ability to do something about the falling sky. They just had trouble finding the king. In, in that Psalm 46, God says, Be still and know that I am God. I'm exalted among the nations. I'm exalted in the earth. Where's the king? Well, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. God is our refuge and strength, very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear as a people of faith. That is what we are called to remember, that we are not driven by our fear and we are not called to overreact to our anxiety. But do hear the disclaimer here. To not be driven by our fear and to not react to our anxiety is not license for selfishness or poor decision. Don't go running off into Foxy Loxy's den, which is to say, don't plan a vacation in a wildfire area. Don't go swimming during a hurricane. And for goodness sake, if you go out, wear a mask, social distance, wash your hands. Do no harm. But don't be driven by your fear and anxiety. 
Lord of hosts is with us. God of Jacob is our refuge. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. We don't have to go looking for the king. God is close. God is at hand. God is very present. Sometimes we forget that. There is a uh, video clip that went viral several years back, and I was unable to secure the permission for its use, but I do want to describe it for you. My hunch is that many of you are already familiar with it. It's a, it's a video of two people stuck on an escalator. And if you were to Google search it, it would be one of the top results you would, you would receive. Check it out. But nevertheless, two people are riding on an escalator, and it breaks down. Man and a woman stuck on an escalator. The man says out loud, oh, that's not good. The woman comments, wouldn't you know it, I forgot my phone. They look around and they forgot, finally begin to yell, hello, there are two people stuck on an escalator. And the woman yells out, help, as that echoes through the mall area. And the scene pans out and fades away as you see the two standing right on the escalator. And as the scene fades back in, a repairman with tools is coming to their aid. He gets on an adjacent escalator to ride to the top. Everyone is relieved, they're happy, until the repairman's escalator breaks down and the video fades out to black. Folk, y'all wanna know how to get off of a broken escalator? It's pretty simple. Take a step. Y'all wanna know what to do when life's acorns keep falling on your head? Look up, and if you're under the oak tree, take a step. In, in the book of Jeremiah, God says, You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. All your heart. Not just some half-hearted seeking where we keep one eye on our fear and the source of our anxiety and the other eye on God. No, seeking God with all our heart by moving from anxiousness to a less anxious place by taking a step toward God, who is close, who is at hand, who is very present. Folk, take a step. Take a step from the fear that drives you into a peace that embraces you. Take a step from anxiety that escalates to a presence that is not anxious. Take a step from isolation and step into the God who is close, who is at hand, and who is very present. All will be well. Thanks be to God. Amen. As members of our local United Methodist churches, we have a chance to offer ourselves and our gifts back to God through our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. May this be a time of truly offering our gifts to our Lord. Let us pray together. Mighty God, deserving of all honor and praise, we bring our gifts this morning, remembering that the offering you truly seek is the offering of our whole lives. Help us, we pray, to live a life that is worthy in your sight. When we struggle and stumble, help us up and put us on the path. On the advice of the Apostle Paul, may our lives be focused on whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, so that our offering may be pleasing in your eyes. In Christ we pray. Amen. Friends, thank you so much for being with us in worship today. It is good to be reminded that we are a people that by the word of God are created in the image of God, to be on mission with God, through the church of God, for the glory of God. And in that glory, may we go from this sacred place and this sacred time, our minds filled with the word and the fellowship of the community of faith to live out our call in the world as a people of joy and of hope. Friends, go with God and know that God is with you, God is before you, and God remains with all those that you love and those that love you. <laughs>